were you aware when you and Gary sat down and wrote More Than Words, which is something so out of the norm from the rest of the record, did you have any idea of how special and enduring that song was going to be at the time? No. No, because we just wrote songs. It was just another song that, you know, we wrote on a porch and then... You go in and we write another one, and then we had we, you know, for the first album we had like 50 songs. More than words was written before before Pornography. It was written. We could have been on the first album. It was towards the end of it, and, and and we just we put it on because it was the song we wanted to put on. And, and the the first person who knew there's one person that knew it was going to go to number one and be a hit. He came into the studio. He listened to it once. Uh, he's I'll give you, I'll give you a couple clues. Six four maybe, singer, out of his mind. Six four singer out of his mind. Thank you. Who? Sebastian Bach. Sebastian came to the studio and he goes, "Dude, that's going to number one." He goes, "That's going to number one." So I was working part time in a record store when Porno Graffiti came out. You must be aware of how many housewives brought that record back to the store when they purchased the entire album and heard the open to decadence dance and was like, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. For as many as we sold, about 30% of them would come back and oh, they'd drop it on the <laughs> counter and be like, you just got to give me the single. I don't know. This is not, get the devil, fuck out. What the hell is this? Yeah. Were you aware that that was going on? Oh, listen, you know, being Queen fans and knowing what we had, the, the label was confused. The label didn't even want to put out more than words. They didn't think it was a hit anyways. Because you got to remember, this is before MTV Unplugged. And there was nowhere to play. Because not like since the 70s, like James Taylor. All the ballads out that time were all big power ballads, if you remember. Like big cannon snares, and they're all massive songs. Here we are with an acoustic guitar and sitting on two stools. The, the, the label's like, that, there's no way we can put that out. Who's going to play it? What station is going to play it? They had to test market it. They would not play, release that song as a single. Like I had to, like I did with the Freddie Mercury tribute, I had to quit the band in a meeting with the president of the label to release More Than Words as a single. Was there pushback from the label to even cl include it on the no, album? No, because they, they knew that's what was different and special about us, that we, we didn't really care <laughs> that we didn't sound like anybody specifically. We had a bit of a funk element. We had horns on the album. You know, nobody was right. doing horns and, and we had like songs like When I First Kissed You there was a Sinatra track and then we had More Than Words which is like a like a Everly Brothers track so we were all over the place but we just wrote songs that we loved you know and, and we didn't really overthink it or think that it couldn't belong or it just you know did what we did we didn't care what anybody tells us we still, we still don't I used to love when I would work in that store and people would come in and I would be able to pick I, I would sell them a copy of Porno Graffiti on cassette or CD or whatever and I would just look at them I would tell the manager I go that's coming back in about two hours because you know, I, I hate to profile but you could profile oh yeah, listen, the rockers would be like okay we're cool with the rest of the record but you saw the housewives and stuff and I'm like, that's coming it, back it wasn't just the records it was on stage so you should have seen the audience faces like they'd come to see this band to do wholehearted oh, and wow, more than work. i didn't think of and that then we'd open with decadence and you'd be like and, they'd, and we'd see them all looking at their tickets going <laughs> Ben, is, are they coming on next? Like, is it, man, people were like so confused. We opened for Bon Jovi at one point, and it was just nobody knew what the hell, like what what they were watching. They didn't know, you know. Gary's got like a black guy, one shoe off. It's like nobody knew what was happening. It was just, uh, it was a mess.